Hey WordPressers, in this video we're going to cover nonces. What are they? What are they used for? And how can we use them in our existing code? Let's get started. Before we dig into the code, it helps better understand what are nonces, and even more, what are they even used for? Essentially, nonces stand for number only used once. This is a little bit of a misnomer in the WordPress community because really, nonces aren't only used once in WordPress. You can technically use them multiple times, but that doesn't matter for the point of this tutorial. Essentially, a nonce in WordPress is a string of numbers and characters that identifies that a form being submitted is coming from a user that we expect the form to be coming from. I mean, this seems kind of obvious. I mean, why do we need it? If a form is available to a user, obviously we're expecting the form. Well, there's a type of attack called cross-site request forgery. You could write a whole novel on it, and I can't even begin to uh, unpack that in this short tutorial. But I'll link a fantastic video by Tom Scott describing what these kind of attacks are. But at a high level, there are ways that in which a user may, may click a infected link that will submit a form on our website unintentionally by the user. Now, this seems pretty benign if it's just a contact form, but let's say our website does transactions, such as sending money or Bitcoin. If someone clicked that malicious link and submitted a transfer request on our website, that wouldn't be good. So how can we protect against that? That's where nonces come in. Essentially, all they do is when we create a nonce and validate for it, we ensure that the form request coming through is authentic and is good to go. So currently, we have a order form ahead of us. There's nothing too fancy, a name, an email, phone, etc. Currently, if we inspect the element, we'll go ahead and go over the submit button. You can put it wherever you want, but I'll, I usually put mine before the submit. Currently, we don't have a nonce. So if I click submit, really all that this code's doing is submitting the form details, and if the order was successful, it returns the fields. It's a really simple plugin, and the full code is going to be hosted on GitHub and linked below. But essentially, all we have is a main class with hooks where we register our shortcode, TD order form. We enqueue some styles and register our AJAX callback. From here, we load in some styles in our form submission script as well as the form code itself. Currently, when we submit it, all we're going to do is return back the post data. I'm not going to explain all the AJAX parts and such. This can be a conversation for a different tutorial, but today we'll focus on the form itself. Right now, it's just a really simple bootstrap styled form. How do we go about adding a nonce field to our form? Well, in WordPress, all we have to do is call this function, wp nonce field. The first parameter is the name of the action. Currently it's titled support form, but we can name this whatever we want. Could be order form, action form, uh, delete comment. It's just whatever you want. The name field, support nonce, is whatever is being submitted via post. So when we send our form submission, this will be the parameter that it comes in in our post array. If we go ahead and refresh, Previously, I showed you that there wasn't that hidden field. If we go over submit, we'll now see the value field. We have support knots and a unique knots field. If we click submit, we'll come back and again see we have a successful form submission. Well, that's not enough. Although we have a knots field present, we're not validating it. So next, the second part for a nonce, once it's been created in our form, we also now need to validate the form. Well, what does that look like? Well, there's only a single function call, verify nonce. What's important in our code, prior to any kind of form data manipulation, such as evaluating form data, like grabbing field values and such, we need to validate that the form request coming through is valid always assume a form submission is faulty or shouldn't be processed until it's been validated. So walking through the code, we're doing a first check if 
a nonce field is even present. If it's not, fail. I don't trust you. Next, we verify the nonce. Here we pass the name first, followed by the action. Now, one comment here, you'll notice that that is in reverse order from where it's defined below. I cannot tell you how many countless hours I've spent trying to debug that issue. Once we see that it passes both a presence check and a validity check that it's the proper nonce, we can go ahead and process the form data. Right now I'm just returning it, but this could be where you send your email, etc. So let's go back to our form. We'll do a quick refresh. Let's go ahead and check to see if the field is there, and it is. If we click Submit, we'll see that the submission was successful. But what happens if we manipulate the nonce? Let's say let's remove its presence or add some additional characters. Therefore, this is not the nonce that the website's expecting. If we submit again, we'll see that it fails. I don't trust you. That's it. I hope you find this tutorial straightforward, easy, and uh, bite-sized to come back for future efforts in case you forget. Uh, really, they're just main two function calls, and we're ready to go. Our form is now much more secure. I plan to create future tutorials over WordPress on how we can further enhance the quality of our form code, such as sanitization and validation, amongst many other aspects in WordPress. If you have any questions about this particular tutorial, or if there's a topic that you would like covered in a future video, please leave a comment in the comment section down below, and I look forward to seeing you next time.